When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about an experiment you would have done in class, and that was about natural indicators. In this video, we're going to cover the next experiment, and the experiment in this case is all about color changes of different indicators. So I'll read the actual top point. It says, identify data and choose resources to gather information about the color changes of a range of indicators. So what we have to do for this experiment is test different indicators and see how they respond to different substances and to see what kind of colors it change to. So in this video, we're going to cover four um, indicators, such as bromothymol blue, litmus paper, or litmus, not litmus paper, but just litmus, phenylphalanin and methyl orange. And if you remember, these all have their specific ranges. That's what is meant by range, is what areas they turn colors, or change their color. So for example, bromothymol blue was yellow. So if it had a pH of less than 6, it would have always been yellow. If it had a pH of more than 7.6, it would be blue. And in between, it had a different range of colors. So, for example, at 6.2, it would have been sort of darkish yellow. At 6.8, it would have been light blue. At 7.2, it would have been slightly darker blue. And then at the end of that, that 7.6, it would have been a dark blue. So, in between 6 and 7.6 is a range where you can see what kind of pH it has. Same thing with the other one, litmus, for example. So, the pH of less than 4, which would have been about here, we have red. If a pH is higher than 9, which is roughly here, it would be blue. Everything in between would be dark purple or reddish blue. So between 4 and 9, you have that range where you can actually see what kind of pH substance has. Whereas if it's lower than 4, it's red, and higher than 9, it's blue. Same thing for phenylphalanine. We have anything which has a pH of less than 7 is going to be colorless. So you put that indicator in it, it's going to say colorless for less than 7. And if it has a pH of higher than 11, so this would have been roughly from here to there, it would have that pinkish color. Everything in between 7 to 11, it would be, it would be turning pink, but it would have different shades of pink. So light pink or a bit darker pink in between 7 and 11. Now, the last one was methyl orange. So for methyl orange, if it had a pH of less than 2, the substance, it would be red. So this part here would be pure red. Then anything above 2 but below 6 would be turning yellow. So you would have different shades of red for pH of 3 and 4. Then you have orange as well. That would be about pH of 5-ish. And then it starts turning yellow for pH of 6. Anything above pH of 6 is always going to be yellow. So these would be the indicators we can use, and we can that's how we can estimate what kind of pH it has, depending on what kind of colors it changed into. For the experiment, what you would actually have had is you would have had your equipment, which in this case was a very simple setup. You have at least five test tubes. You would have also had your droppers, and in those droppers you would have had your different indicators. So for example, litmus, bromothymol blue, ethyl orange and phenylphylin, the ones we just talked about. But then you also would have had to have your substances. So for example, lemon juice, coffee, soap, drain cleaner, and tap water. These are the ones we're going to use in this video. You might have covered different ones in your experiment, but these just have a different range of pHs. So what we would do is we would test these with the different indicators and see what colors they change to see what kind of pH they have. So for the method, for the actual setup, you would have had your different beakers, not your beakers, but your actual test tubes. This is meant to be a test rack, test tube rack, and then you have your test tubes here. So I have your five test tubes in your test tube racks. That's the first part. The second part was place solution into test tubes. So now we're going to look at those five solutions we had, and we're going to start placing them in the actual test tube. So we'll say, okay, first test tube will have lemon juice. And we don't know the pH, we'll figure that out using the indica indicators. But now we're just placing our solution into these test tubes. The second one will have coffee, so green was meant to be coffee here. Soap, 
we have for, for gray, so soap we put into third one. The drain cleaner, we put that into the fourth one. And then the last one is our controls, that's gonna be our tap water. So that was the second step. First we set it up, then we put in the solution. And for the final step, we just added the indicators. So we chose, we have to repeat this experiment four times in total, so this is gonna be done four times, once for every indicator. So we might start, let's say we start with um, bromo, bromo blue, bromo thymol blue as our first indicator. So what you do is you just do a couple, put in a couple drops of this bromo thymol blue in each of these test tubes and see what color change. So observe the color of the solution. And using the, the actual observ observations, we can estimate what kind of pH it has. So you can imagine you'll do this four times, once for every single indicator. And then with the observations you, you would have gotten would have been similar to this. You would have had for bromothymol blue, these would have been your observations for different substances. So for lemon juice, it would have turned yellow with bromothymol blue. And what that means, yellow is a pH of less than six. So we know that lemon juice using our bromothymol blue has less than six for its pH. Coffee, because it also turned yellow and less than six is, is yellow, so it's Coffee also has less than six. We don't know exactly what it is. We just know that it's less than six using bromo, bromo, bromo thymol blue. Uh, soap turned blue. So soap turned blue. In this case, we know that anything above 7.6 would turn blue. So it has to have be higher than 7.6. We don't know what pH exactly. We just know higher than 7.6. Same thing with drain cleaners. They also turn blue. So drain cleaners will also be higher than 7.6. Don't know the exact pH, but no, it's going to be higher than 7.6. Tap water, on the other hand, turned green. So this is the scale for bromo, bromo thymol blue. And green is actually sort of this area right here. So less than 6 is yellow, more than 7.6 is blue. In between, we have mostly green. So we can actually estimate it will be around about 7. So pH of about 7 for tap water. And that means tap water itself would have a pH of 7 and would be neutral. So then we would go on and do the whole experiment again with litmus paper or with litmus indicator and check their color. So for litmus paper or litmus indicator, lemon juice turned red. So red means in the case of litmus indicator that it has a pH of less than 4. So using litmus indicator, we know that lemon juice has a pH of less than 4 less than four. Coffee, also the coffee turned bluish red, which means less than four is red. It's gonna have more than four. So coffee is more than four, but it's not yet blue. So it's more than four and less than nine. It's gonna be somewhere in between four and nine for coffee. Soap turned blue. So soap is going to be higher than nine because the pH of higher than nine is blue. So it's going to be more than 9. Don't know exactly what pH is, but just more than 9. Same for drain cleaner, also blue, so it's also more than 9. And tap water, that's purple blue. And purple blue, if you look at here, this area of the litmus, that's purple blue. And that's roughly at that 7 area. So purple blue, that's roughly about 7 to 8, which makes sense because tap water itself has a pH of about 7. So that was using litmus. Then we would have done the same thing again using phenylphthalein. Now for lemon juice, it turned colorless. So that's that whole range here, that colorless range. So it's going from about zero to eight. So it would be, lemon juice would have a pH of anywhere between zero and eight using the phenylphthalein. Coffee would also be colorless. So it also would have a range of seven to eight, zero to eight. Soap was light pink. So light pink was somewhere between here. This is pink, dark pink. Light pink is here. And that's pH of seven, eight, nine, so between nine and ten. So, using this method, we can figure out that soap has a pH somewhere between nine and ten. Now the drain cleaner turned crimson, so that's deep pink, and deep pink is this part here, and that's a pH, a range of, so it's going to be somewhere in that range of eleven, eleven to fourteen. Don't know exactly what kind of pH, but somewhere in that range. Tap water was colorless, so again, using this indicator, it's going to tell us 
can be somewhere between 0 to 8 pH. Uh, for methyl orange, methyl orange turns lemon juice red. So pH of 2 or less turns something methyl orange red. So we know that lemon juice has a pH of 0 to 2 using this indicator. For coffee, it turned it orange. And orange is actually right here. And then gives it a pH using methyl orange of around about 2, sorry, 4 to 5. That's the 4 to 5 range here. Soap was yellow, so that soap, that means it's pH of higher than 6. So more than 6 for all the other ones. Same with drain cleaner, that's more than 6 as well. And tap water. So using this, all of these indicators, we would figure out the range of substance. For example, we estimate our best estimate for tap water was that it has a pH of 7. Our best estimate for coffee was using methyl orange, which said that it was somewhere between 4 and 5 here, using methyl orange. It gave us the most precise reading. For soap, that was using, we used, for soap, we used this one, the phenylphthalein. And it told us that it was somewhere between 9 and 10. And then for the last one, which was the drain cleaner, the drain cleaner we used this one again, the, the phenylphthalein, and it told us it was crimson. So it had a pH of somewhere between 11 to 14 for the drain cleaner. And tap water was, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, at 7. So these were the values we've gotten using different indicators. And these were the actual values. So we can see, okay, we had an estimate of pH of 2 for best estimate of pH of 2 for lemon juice, and the actual pH is 2.4. Coffee, we used, when we used methyl orange, we got the pH of about 4 to 5, and the actual pH is 5. Soap, its actual pH is about 10, and we got that estimate of 9 to 10 using phenylphthalein. So again, that's also pretty accurate. The drain cleaner is about 13, and we said that it was somewhere between 11 and 14 using phenylphthalein. So again, we got it relatively close. And tap water, because it's neutral, has a pH of 7. And using bromothymol blue, we got to 7 as well. So we got there. So by using different types of indicators, we can usually figure out more or less to, quite accurately what pHs different substances have. So hopefully that was useful. But you have done the experiment in class, or you will be doing that experiment in class soon. Thank you for watching.